Sorry, That's about okay. that. Sorry, go ahead. So you wanted me to announce this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. It, it, it's tomorrow. It's coming up very quickly tomorrow. Uh, we have a lot of registered people, but it's Zoom, so there is no limit to registration. So please feel free to share it with whoever you think might benefit from it. The workshop is on Zoom from uh, tomorrow on June 1st from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's a four-hour event. After the registration, the all the registrants will receive uh, the sign in uh, link, but they need to register. I then, actually, um, yeah, sorry, Jane. I was I put on the while you're talking. I was trying to pinpoint it, and I couldn't pinpoint it. But if you can see my screen, this is the flyer. You guys have it. Um, your students can. Um, we put it on the files. You your students can re uh, register. We put the link also on the agenda. Um, and yeah, Jane. Anything else? Sorry. And I extended the registration. It says register by my May 29th, by I extended the form till tonight. Awesome. All right. Um, thank you, Jane. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we set it because that's coming up tomorrow. And I know some of you guys, if you guys are teaching the summer, you can share it with your students. Um, and let's go ahead. Um, we can get started with uh just kind of updates that we have. Um, if you guys look at the agenda. Uh, you know, we did a welcome in the introductions, and I don't know if Kathleen's already here, um, because we were going to get an update on the project that was happening, and I don't know if you remember the last time, I want to say maybe, was it the last time we met, that we were talking about the regional projects that they're looking in from the Vision 2030, um, and I think what, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Bobby, but the way that I understood it, we were supposed to work with Don, um, but somehow I think I think Kathleen's project is taking the lead and she's gonna start working with a lot of us. Um, in the CCAOE conference that we attended, it uh, she kind of added all of our TPPs as a resource or I think you know part of the committee. They have not met, they haven't met yet. Um, and I, I haven't gotten an email from Kathleen and I'm pretty sure because they're trying to get everything organized. Right. Some um, of us got Right. Some of us got put on the advisory team, and then some of us are, are listed as resources. Right. Um, but she, yeah, she's supposed to be logging in today. For a minute there, I thought that maybe uh, Dion had been suckered. No, not Dion. <laughs> Whoever's from uh, um, um, San Francisco. <laughs> Oh, for um, the I thought I, I thought I saw you'd been suckered into uh, subbing for for Kathleen. <laughs> She's, like she had said she would be here this morning no, okay. um, to give an update on that project. But So you can skip over her spot on the awesome. agenda for now. I imagine she'll show up at some point. That's totally fine. But I, I and I, what I wanted sure. to do is I just really wanted to give everybody an update because I think we were left with the uh, mindset that we were going to kind of work together to see what the vision 2030 was and then how we were going to, you know, get this materials that they need. But it turns out, um, you know, they had a little bit of change, uh, and which is totally fine. We are now based, I think it's a committee. And so it's still going to happen. The work's still going to get done. We're just going to reorganize how it's going to get done. And again, because this is coming from the chancellor's office, they already have a contracted person that you all met, Don. And so I guess they're using the San Francisco Bay, uh, you know, pathway that they already have. And that's how we're going to move forward towards L.A., as soon as I get more um, uh, more information, we, you know, we'll let you guys know. What I did want to talk about too, and you know, that I'll let, allow Kathleen to come on in. There has been um, a couple of things that I, I wanted to talk about. Uh, one being the the EDU course numbers, like you know, the ID numbers that we use for the chancellor's office, and then I think Sharon mentioned something about the Math One Hundred Four that she. Uh, <laughs> There's, and I think it's because it's it's not going to be used anymore. Now, we do have Jane here, and I'm going to put her on the spot just because, sorry, Jane, you're the math you're the math department here, but I know you probably know more information regarding math um, and what's happening with the math. I think they're asking some people that they're taking away Math 104. Students will now have to take statistics or something like that. I wasn't aware of that. Oh, yeah, it's. Yes, at our institution at ABC, it is uh, Math 120 uh -huh. for elementary school uh -huh. teachers. 
And we haven't discussed that at the department meeting and I wasn't aware that it was going away as well. I know that elementary uh, or um, uh, all algebra courses went away, uh, trigonometry and pre-calculus going away by fall 2025. All students in the STEM pathway are going to go directly to uh, directly to calculus. And I know we still we still have math one ten, which is which is gonna change based on the CID. Uh, it's a math for liberal arts students. We still have it, and we still have statistics. I wasn't aware of what is going to happen with math for elementary school teachers. Let me do a little more research, and I can bring more updates. Awesome. I can tell you my yes. math faculty that teaches our, our math for that. He's mm -hmm. fighting it right now. He's working on making changes to try to get it reapproved through Cal Getze. Um, I'm doing the same thing for one of my education courses. My critical thinking and ed course was considered not critical thinking, even though it's harder than English three, but whatever. So mm -hmm. I'm having to rewrite that now um, and trying to get it reapproved through Cal Getze. Um, so it's not that it's not over, there's going to be a big fight, but with all of the changes that Jane just mentioned happening with math, um, it is going to be um, a huge disservice at the community college for a lot of our students. Um, they're really funneling them into a very small pathway for math and um, the opportunities and options for students are not going to be that great. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned this, Shannon, because uh, we see this need for students who feels like they're left behind. Those who go into to the STEM pathway, they they're thrown out right into calculus class. I don't don't ask me. I have a lot to say about that, and it's not good things. <laughs> so I'm just not going to say anything. But I will tell you that we are working on developing some kind of a. Um, uh, workshops or or non-credit class or academies, something, some kind of support that we can offer for students because we're not allowed to offer it as even sure. for non-credit as a course. So we're looking for the ways to offer that support that is needed. And okay. once I would love to collaborate with other faculty, math faculty throughout the California on what everyone's doing in terms of supporting our students? I have a SPED background, Jane. So I actually run our guidance studies program at my college, which is one of the only ones in California. I teach two levels of remedial math um, to help prepare students that are coming in from high school from IEPs and 504s to get to transfer level math. Um, but the way that the, the um, wording is written in California currently, I only have to have 51% of the students in my classes as DSPS students. So many returning adult students take my guidance studies math classes to prepare them to get ready for transfer level. Um, so they are units, they are getting credits, but they're not transferable. So may I may I email you later for the details? Sure. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. I also wanted to mention that we do have two-day workshops coming up for students, uh, math review for truth and math review for statistics and math review for biology because biology faculty also express concern with the math preparation. Uh, I'm going to put the website if you want to share with the students. We have all information on the websites and the workshops are coming up June 11, 12, June 13, and June 17, 18. So please feel free to uh, well. It's an personal workshop. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone in the AV, th they can come otherwise. But you know, you know what, James? Like, that's such a, no, but it, you know what? Look at look at this, like, what I'm thinking about right now, like just what Shannon mentioned. Maybe this is something that we collaborate as a regional and we do like a, I don't know, we do workshops on Zoom, like a review on what you just said, but we maybe we can do them via Zoom. But, but I used to have I, math prep academy during Zoom. Uh, during but I, I think that... Day. We're missing a, a lot of the picture here. The, and I don't mean, you know, I, there's always a place for activism and we're just being railroaded because there's a, like, it's almost like a double standard because the thing is, is that they, here we talk, oh, there's a teacher shortage and this and that, and please don't make barriers and this and that. And this is a horrible barrier. There's nothing wrong with Math 104 for elementary school teachers. It is a GE. So now they want something missing. So instead of saying, well, if you add this and that to that course, because 
you know, there's other, we, we have, for example, not the coastline is the only example. We have math, we have two AAs for, for teaching. One is the AAT and one is the regular AA. And so the regular AA, I guess it can still have, or I don't even know if it can have math 104. And then we also have, and we did, we, we developed this with, with um, Cal State Long Beach geometry for elementary school teachers. And that's being phased out, but all of a sudden they want it back for something. And then we had this very uh, experiential statistics course that Long Beach pulled and they said, no, we're going to have an upper division. We can't have it anymore. But they gave us years to get it fixed. So people didn't get screwed here. All of a sudden you have these students who they're saying, oh, don't get too many units and this and that. And, and we're just letting it happen. I mean, it sounds to me because there's no, I don't see an active movement or update or, I mean, I'm in the, in the dark on this because no one's telling us and I'm not a math instructor. I go to my math department and, you know, and I have to fight to make sure they have the courses. But, um, you know, so I, I don't think, you know, to have workshops. I mean, I think that's wonderful, but it's it, it's the basic thing. Why 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 are they at being asked to take yet even another course when what's wrong with Math 104? I don't understand. There. Yeah, no, I feel there no, no, I mean, you're preaching to the choir here, but we uh, we get it. I think Shannon has the best. I think you have somebody, right, Shannon, that you said somebody's working with a Getsy to try to get it um approved. Yeah. Um, And I know, uh, well, we can connect. Nadia has had her name, has had her hand yeah, up. Yeah, I was going to say, Nadia, go ahead. Um, So it's Nadia. Nadia. And, okay. um, no worries. And um, yeah, so I was just going to say that, um, so the articulation officer at our college, um, I think is, part of a larger voice of um, people trying to, so our, at our class, at our course, I'm um, sorry, at our college, it's called um, Math 27 and it's number systems, I think for educators or something. Um, and it has also been um, singled and it's part of the elementary ed transfer model curriculum. Um, so students who are in that, going for that AA degree are required to take that course. However, um, and so he, anyway, he's been fighting at the, you know, and basically what he was told most recently is um, if they're in that, if they're going for that degree, they still have to take that class, but now they have to take another class to meet their GE transfer requirement. So then our students end up having to take an extra math class, which they're not going to want to do and will extend, of course, um, their time. Um so, but I guess I only brought that up because I think that at least um, at our district, a lot of the, the two um, articulation officers who are around for some of those Calgetsi conversations um, have been trying to push. Um, and it seems, I mean, this is his kind of offhand response, but it seems like a lot of the courses that they don't want to take are ones that they consider to be too practical versus theoretical. <laughs> like, well, our teachers need practical stuff. Okay. Right. But that's apparently that's a lot of what the UCs don't want. They want courses that are more theory and not as focused on practicum. So our teaching in a diverse society course similarly, um, because it doesn't, you know, we could, some colleges are switching it to be more ethnic studies focused, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing, but then it takes out all the practicality stuff about how to do it, how to work with children on the topic. So um, I agree that I think this is a a lot a potential something that has a lot of legs potentially to become problematic in terms of um you know um GE requirements is this coming down from the UC like I'm shocked right now to hear you say about the um oh your baby um about the um about the the education with the the community teaching in diverse society what do you I mean it's one of the most important, I mean, at least to me, I see it like a core, you know, a core, yeah, like a core course. Yep. It's one of the eight Kappa line courses, right? We yes. anticipate everybody's taking it. Right. Um, and so it just, again, it's a, it's an issue of, yeah, I mean, we want them to take it, but it's not going to count for GE. The pattern, the place where it used to count on the, um, right. trend, it, did, yeah. it doesn't, uh, it doesn't fit that area anymore. So students can take it as an elective but it no longer, it can't sort of double, it used to count for our degree plus the multicultural studies or mm -hmm. um, right. area. And now it doesn't, because basically that area is functionally being gotten rid of. Um, and at least it sounds like, and again, this is his opinion, so I, I haven't been in the meeting, but it sounds like a lot of that the UC system is having a much larger drive on the Cal Getsy decisions than the Cal State system because mm. they have more power. 
because they don't have to play basically. So they're like, if you want us to play, then you have to play by our rules. So. Wow. Well, I know you guys might have mentioned this already, but is this, <clears throat> excuse me, is this happening now or? Oh my gosh. That's I crazy. think it's as of fall 25, it becomes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So fall people 25. still have catalog rights, right. you know, at least, right. And so if they started in that process, but yeah, as of fall 25, it doesn't count anymore. In the, in the, re and, and you know, Leah, like, and the reason why I was like asking about the CID for the edu transfer degree was because i've been so because they're changing i had to sit down and really because they're changing all of the i get see i had to go back and just the amount of like changes it, it's just really hindering more of our students like there's more barriers now they're the way that i see it you know because uh they were questioning like the um the hours right that the students have to do and they can only account for a certain amount and then the way that I saw the the transfer degree is you only have one class in education and then the rest is just liberal arts and you want to be a teacher. How? So I was arguing, like, why can't we just, you know, to me in my beautiful, perfect world, we would have, you know, introduction to education. Absolutely. But you would have the core components of child growth and development, the child in the community. Right. Teaching in a diverse society. Like those are things that you would need to become just the basic teacher. Um, but they don't count those. You can't use those. And I can't use them now because they took them out of area, the one that um, Nadia, Nadia? Oh, Nadia. Nadia was mentioning. So I couldn't use those. And I was, that's why I was asking why, who, long story short, for the EDU um, degree that a lot of us use in the chancellor's office, what I found out just recently is that it hasn't been looked at since 2016. That was the last time all the community colleges came together to look at it. I had asked um, Jessica, she's the one that, um, uh, what's her name? I think, Jane, do you know Jessica? What's her name? The counselor that leads the... Ethan. Yes. Uh, yeah, so to keep me posted because they they need to revise, it needs to be revised. And that's something that I was advocating for. I know Shannon, you'll probably be right next to me. It's We really need to look at, you know, at the EDU transfer degree. We really need to look at it. Like it's, it, 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 go ahead. Did education 245 hours change and we don't know anything about no, it? No, no, no. It hasn't changed. But what I'm saying is that's the only education that uh, that that the transfer degree has. That's the only education course. That's it. That's it. The rest is liberal arts, science, geology, math, um, labs and math. Right. Like it's but that's the only but I think it's always been like that. Yeah. We only have that one course. Well, there's a the child that's development. Thing. We have child growth and development. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That but, that's it. You're right. but that's it. But what I'm mm -hmm. saying is like we that's been like you we know that that's not working. That's what I'm saying. It's it's not. So Absolutely. I'm saying we need to come back to the table and we need to really revise it. Right. Because what we did when we um, when we decided to do the elementary ed degree, because we didn't want to specifically for the purposes that you're saying, we're like, well, that's not how's that helping anybody? Mm -hmm. um, and so there's room for some electives. Mm. So what we put in was the courses that you suggested as those electives. However, what we, because we wanted them to have more content. And now we realize because of that, students have to take an art and a history class when they transfer, because most people put in, those are the transfer requirements. And so they put those in as the electives that students should take rather than the ECE courses. Um, and so now we're considering, okay, well, if we're, now we're creating like a different barrier. So should we update our degree mm. to take out our ECE electives and put in the art and history so that they when they transfer they don't have to take extra courses I mean it's I it's, mean I don't know yeah this is why I'm saying we need really need to come to the table and I'm waiting for Jessica to, because ultimately um and again it comes down to us working with the UCs it's what they accept um and that's just the way that it is and, and it's not the best um I do want to, I'll bring, um, I'll try to get more information for our next meeting. Um, and I'll, you know, we can have a, another discussion for our next meeting. Cause I don't want to keep you here forever. I know we can go on forever and talk about this for hours. I know that because we're all in the same boat. Um, and so I'll go ahead and open the floor now, um, to, uh, the co each college to let's get updates on what you're doing and, and what's happening. Uh, I know I'm there and Jane is there, but I'll let Jane, um, talk about, we just had our teach for AV. Um, and I think Leah, Leah had her teach for LA, but go, we'll go ahead and, um, uh, allow, um, Le uh, Jane talk about our amazing teach for AV. 
Am I on a spot again? You are. <laughs> well, yes, that was that was awesome event. We we have uh we had two days. On Friday it was in person and there were close to 60 people, I would say, in person. Right. And we had presenters from different colleges, from uh, COIC, from our college. And it was just great, awesome presentation, uh, awesome presentations, uh, great, useful sessions. And we had, we received, uh, we received good feedback from the participants that they want to hear more. They very like they, they very much like the sessions and they would like to hear more about uh, about that and continue the conversation. And on Saturday it was Zoom also with about uh, sixty to seventy people on Zoom. So it was great event. It was it was a great event. Um, and anything. <laughs> Yeah. No, I was going to say it's the first time that we've had it because this Leia started this. Um, and as we all know, she's the cause of this. Uh, <laughs> and I always say that this is a love hate relationship with the Teach Conference. In the moment, I hate it so much. And I'm being honest, I'm like, Hi. I'm not going to do it next year. Um, but uh, it's thanks to Leia. Leia started this before, I think we, um, two years before we went into pandemic mode. Um, and it was a huge conference that we had. Um, but anyhow, uh, it was after 2020, you know, we all went in, uh, COVID happened and we all started doing it online. This is the first time that we had it in person again for teach for AV. It's the first time we have it in person. Um, and I think it was a wonderful, uh, it was a wonderful event. That's what I was used to. I wasn't used to the online one. Um, and it is a lot of work and it's, I don't really like the process of it, but it it's at the end, you look at the students and how it turned out. It was phenomenal. Uh, we had wonderful speakers uh, this time in our panel. We had um, somebody from computer science from IT. We had uh, Ruth Ellis from CPTP came out to talk about special needs. We had like different components. We had, you know, ECE folks. So it was really, really nice and really uplifting. And so we did get a lot of great feedback. Um, and Jane is amazing. She uh, was like, oh, man, <laughs> she didn't really know what was going to happen in person. She's like, I don't know. But <laughs> a lot of planning. <laughs> Thank you, Adira, for helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be overwhelming to plan myself. I, I did plan the last year and the previous year conference. It was it was a lot for Zoom. I didn't even expect that many details needed to be included in the in-person session. So thank you so much, Idira, for helping to plan this event. Absolutely. Um, and so that's for Teach for AV. And we already mentioned we have a CBIS workshop coming up. Uh, I am also going to be doing a, a permit clinic workshop in July. And I have the dates. I will, I'm actually working on the flyer. So I apologize. I will send that out to the listserv. Uh, I am doing it in person, but I'm also wanting to record the Zoom for that workshop. So if any students of yours want to just kind of listen in, they can absolutely. Um, and I'll share with you guys once I have that flyer ready. And so for that's for Teach for AV um, and what, what our announcements were, I'll give it to Leah. Thank you, Yadi. Thank yes, you, sir. Jane. Yeah, so um, just like Yadira said, you know, Teach for LA is like a love-hate relationship. <laughs> It started actually during the pandemic because, you know, we needed something to, you know, we needed something to continue to serve our students. So we didn't give up. And so, you know, Teach for LA started uh, there and it just grew and grew. And so May 6 and 7 was our very recent one. Uh, that was already our eighth regional Teachers and Future uh, Educators Conference. Uh, it, is, it was also two days and uh, it used to be a whole week if, uh, if I remember correctly, but, you know, just capacity wise, you know, it was, it's a lot of work, even though it's like on Zoom, it's a lot of work. And it's even a, a lot more work if you're doing it in person because of all the logistics that you have to prepare. But it was, uh, it was all worth it. Of course, we had uh, educators, aspiring teachers, and other education stakeholders that uh, came together. And it was really a dynamic and and, and very enrich, uh, enriching experience for our students. Um, so we had two keynotes. 
We had Casey Cuny, who was the 2024 uh, California Teacher of the Year. And also our closing keynote was Kimberly White Smith. He was the, oh, she's the Dean of the School of Leadership and Education Sciences or SOULS. And they had very powerful messages to our students. And um, they really sparked a lot of uh, inspiration and, um, you know, ideas for change and innovation in education. Uh, we had, um, we had a wide array of uh, topics, and uh, so I'm really hoping that um, a lot of us statewide, so even though this is kind of Teach for LA, but it's not just limited to LA, it's really for everyone. And we even had like uh, someone from abroad, you know, uh, coming to the Zoom workshop, someone from Seychelles, I, th I think was there. So that was really great. It's uh, pretty much international. Anyone who is interested in education is welcome to attend. And we definitely uh, encourage you to, you know, um, ask your students to attend uh, these workshops as they come, like the ABC one, uh, Teach for the Bay is coming as well. And of course, Teach for LA. And um, I will be remiss uh, if I don't um, give credit to Nicole, uh, because we uh, partnered with the Center for Collaborative Education uh, to do this um, Teach for LA. And uh, Nicole was really like the driving force that made everything happen. So I give a lot of credit to her. Um, what else? We had about uh, 200 participants uh, from more than 25 local colleges, um, and the feedback was uh, phenomenal. It was overwhelmingly positive. Uh, every survey, uh, the survey that we had um, rated the conference with uh, four stars, and it really reflected a high level of satisfaction from both our students and our presenters. And I'm going to end it there. And so I hope that I do see your students uh, next year as well. Thank you, Leah. Um, and just a reminder that, like Leah mentioned, this is for everybody in the region, just like Teach for AV. Um, we put it out for any students, like you can send your students to us. Uh, you know, we send the flyer, everybody's welcome. Uh, so just, I hope that we all kind of get in that habit of, you know, as a region, collaborating and just, you know, sharing the information. And if you wanted to do a workshop for our next one, by all means, uh, feel free to reach out to me and we can, you know, set you up. Uh, we also, I actually wanted to give a, a huge shout out. And I don't think she's here, but, um, uh, you know, we had uh, gift cards from different colleges and then, um, uh, Tony sent me from San Diego. Uh, what's her uh, Tony's uh, college name? I can't spell it. Kuka, uh, Kuyamaka. I think it's Kuyamaka. Kuyamaka. Yeah. Kuyamaka. 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 Um, donated uh, the bags for our students for uh, Teach for AV. So huge shout out to them. Leah, thank you so much for the gift card. Uh, I know I, I put it for Rio Hondo. So just, and we had other um, departments like the CFE gave us uh, goodies for our students. Um, and that's pretty much it. And I think um, we have, Bobby, did you want to talk about your uh, webinar information or no? Oh, I, that was something, um, the info on child development apprenticeship that went on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I put that on there because uh, Tony Cordoba had sent that to me, texted it to me. Um, and so I put it on there, although I obviously it was already on May 9th, but I went ahead and put it on there because if you go to that link, um, there is the recording of the webinar and there they also have their PowerPoint um, listed there. He had oh. just texted me one day and said, this is like coming soon, hoping to have the model curriculum available soon. Oh, so okay. I just put it on there for more for information purposes because he was passing it along, so. Awesome, okay, thank you, Bobby. Um, and I do, Um, that was just kind of on, on, on our end. And for the updates, do any of your colleges wanna um, have anything uh, they wanna share out? I'll go ahead and open the floor for you guys. Yes, wait a minute, I'm looking for the thing to raise my hand, it's gone. Reactions, okay, <laughs> raise hand, yes. <laughs> Oh, this, is, this is real quick. Um, 
um, I'm from Coastline, and you know, a while back when we some of us were in a grant together, I think I would say I was railroaded, but I don't know if it's railroaded, but um, to do a course in um, teach your career introduction to community college teaching, and it was for CTE, so somebody who's working in um, in the field, you know, they, they could teach in the community college with um, um, you know, several like four courses, it would be a certificate, and um, they didn't need a master's degree, you know, if they had all this experience. Okay, so I didn't really want to do it because it's not our area, but we did it. And um, I, I'm and the course that I'm trying very hard to fill, and I can't fill. Steve once, you know, reached out about maybe having people take the course, it's a really good course. Um, and so if you have people who are either CTE instructors who would like to teach their career in the community college, or you have um, instructors who really know their, their discipline, but they really don't have a clue how to teach, this course is for them. And so if you want information on the course and you know what we can offer, um, you know, get in touch with me at Coastline because what happens is that it gets canceled more than it's offered because we don't have enough people and they're being really obnoxious about it because i say if we had word of mouth you know this course is great it would really help but they keep on canceling it. and i have two students who i i believe they will go and and make it an accreditation issue because how can we offer a certificate in a course and then keep on canceling at the last minute so that's all so if anybody has um any who, who are you the one who teaches that class i i um i co-teach it with cheryl chapman and so um, um, maybe I can connect you to Richard Nicholson. He used to work for us at um, uh, El Camino College. Um, and he, in one of his many careers, he worked for the CTC and he was in that department where people get their CTC, uh, I mean, their uh, CTE credential. Um, he, I know that he still works on the side, helping people to get certified in that you know in whatever cte field they're in because he just included me on an email just like this week um so maybe he can refer people to yeah, you i was so gonna say I'll, um, I'll send an email and connect you guys i mean it's one of the mission statements of um the chancellor's office but you know it never materialized that i have enough students and so um yeah Okay. I know. <laughs> so maybe he can refer people because he's always helping people do that. He just does it for fun. Great. Um, yeah. Sharon, would you he be was a CTE teacher? teacher in another life? Yeah. Okay. So I'll put in the chat my yeah. email. Yeah. Here. I was going to say, put your information okay. in the chat. Um, we do have Steve here. Awesome. Uh, Steve, we were um, praying that you would show, <laughs> show up. There has been a lot of talk about math 104 and and what needs to be dropped and not and so i was like oh man i was sweating bullets i'm like i hope steve shows up because you're the person to talk to about this uh please go ahead the floor is yours hi everyone sorry i was being late i had an overlapping meeting but i'm glad to be here um for those folks i haven't met yet my name is steve batista i work at santa Ana college as a faculty program coordinator for our center for teacher education and i also serve as your lead for the transfer model curriculum on the at for elementary teacher education so um, we've been very active this semester in working through some of the issues that have come up related to our associate degree for transfer um, because exactly of the math, uh, CID math uh, like 120 course, the math for elementary school teachers and the um, in, uh, now the um, uh, Calgetsi, um, which will be implemented in 2025. And so um, the challenge with that course, as most of you know, is that course is not UC transferable. Um, and the fact that they are um, blending the CSU GE and the IGETC GE together into one pattern, that course drops out of the quantitative reasoning category for our students to meet general education. So I have met um, our transfer model, our, our FDRG have met um, very, uh, several times and I've also met with the lead at the academic senate um, for the math FDRG um, which really is the is the group uh, and also with the math folks who are involved with ICAS which is the group in the state that has come together to develop the Calgetsi. The problem with our math course is that um, the UCs do not deem it as meeting the quantitative reasoning an acceptable quantitative reasoning course for admission into the University of California, nor does it meet the GE standards for the IGETSI, which is a condition for it to exist on the new GE program. So we went around several 
scenarios of how we might be able to get this course because we know and our CSU colleagues know that it's definitely a math course, definitely should be GE, definitely should be included with Calgetsy. But the problem is the UCs are the big dogs in this and they are the they won't agree to this. Um, and in order for them to for us to agree to this, we would have to get someone from the UC to come on board and champion it in ICAST at the statewide committee and, and with the math faculty at the UCs to push it forward. And we don't feel like there is a person um, to, that can do that for us. And so um, that course probably um, for the most part will not be included as part of Calgetsy moving forward. The second option was to rewrite another course that could meet all the requirements and Calgetsy. But it was also deemed then by CSU that it really wouldn't meet the same intention of our math for elementary school teachers. And so it really would, it wouldn't save our students any, they couldn't articulate that course for their course at the CSU. So it wouldn't really help our students. They'd be taking our course and the, the same course or a different course at the university after they transfer. And so what we've decided to do at this point is to move math to the math for elementary school teachers out of the TMC um, as a core requirement. And it'll be dropping down into list C, um, which as you know, is you know other courses to make up the 60 units. Um, and um, the students will just be doing a, a GE course with us as part of their uh, associate degree. Anything else that's on um, the Calgetsy, like our um, statistics course or a, a math for large students if you have one of those courses or college algebra and then math for elementary school teachers, um, if they are able to do that to um, complete the, the, the TMC. So that's the status of that course. I wish we had more better news on that one. We just don't think we can get through the hurdle of the UCs um, accepting that course for it to actually stick and be a part of Calgetsy. Wait, so, Steve, Steve did you, I just want to understand because I'm writing this down. You're, you say move Math 104 to list C yeah. And then where does statistics go? It's just going to be, it's not going to be a part of the, the core requirements. It's just going to be a course that students have to complete as with other TMCs. They just basically do the major courses and then gen ed. And so it'll just be part of their gen ed that they'll have to complete as part of the associate for transfer. So there won't be a prescribed math course. There will not be a prescribed math course in our AA degree. You're kidding. Yeah. So the other news, um, Nadia, I see your hand. Let me get through the rest of the, the questions and or the rest of the, the scenarios, and then I'll open up the questions. The other option, the other thing that we decided is that um, we are going to actually create a second associate degree for transfer for elementary teacher education. So we realize that this, the, the one that exists right now, was primarily created for integrated teacher education programs, right? That align very specifically to the domains of the elementary subject matter preparation. And it's very inflexible when it comes to students trying to, to use that pattern to go into an integrated program within the CSU. And so because those programs still exist and because that associate transfer was kind of set up like that, the, the, the CSU campuses are very reluctant to let go of any of those requirements because if a student doesn't do all those requirements, um, then um, it doesn't align to their integrated program and it doesn't really work for them anymore. So um, we did come up with a couple different changes in that specific associate degree for transfer. Um, we were able to loosen up some of the sciences. We're recommending that the sciences uh, go down from three sciences to two sciences. Um, and then there's some of the other areas, there'll be some options, um, but it's gonna remain largely unchanged, but we're gonna rename it uh, Elementary Teacher Education Integrated. Then we, our plan is to begin next fall to create a second TMC, Elementary Teacher Education Non-Integrated, which will be much more flexible, that will work for non-integrated programs, that will not be 56 units, that will be more, um, aligned to and acceptable for students going into a child development major at a CSU and an elementary teacher ed track or a liberal studies major or into a UC into an education pathway. So it will be much more flexible um, and designed for folks who are going into programs that aren't as rigid, at, rigid as the elementary teacher ed integrated programs that we're seeing across the state. 
So I think that's kind of, I'll pull up there to see if there's any questions um, to answer and see what we have. Right now, this is all recommended by the group. I'm still working um, to finalize all these recommendations and the, the, the processes will, those will all be pushed out to all of us as discipline experts for review and comment. And then um, the, the FDRG will take all that comments back and then um, you know, finalize the integrated pathway and then begin working on the non-integrated pathway. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm just... Uh, <sighs> Yeah, but in the meantime, I tell my math department to put don't don't put um you know discontinue math one oh four and just go and let's see and then um take it from there. Yeah, don't make any changes right now. So the chancellor's office is not recommending any changes to your social for transfer. So mm -hmm. at this point in time, so um leave it as it is, and you know it's still going to be. I don't know what they're going to do on the back end of that, but uh, the recommendation is not to change it at this point in time until we have some specific guidelines on what to do and how to change it. And Go what ahead. about geometry for elementary school teachers? We have that one at the same time, and that's kind of wishy-washy. But now Long Beach wants it back, and so does Fullerton for now. Well, that doesn't change your your local articulation agreements, right? This associated fever transfer is just a template for the state. We all have our own local articulation right. agreements and what CSUs want, but that's kind of how it is. So Nadia, I, I don't want to- Oh, sorry. But... No, thank you. Um, yeah, so I, you par I think you partially answered the question. I was just wondering when, if we have an idea of when this will be effective, mostly because some of what we've been doing is putting together these degree maps for students so they can kind of see what courses they should be taking. Um, and our math department has been very um, supportive of us uh, having this course, but it's coming out of their their pocket. And so um, at some point, if if it's not going to be required, you know, I'm sure that they will decide not to continue offering it. So anyway, just wondering if we have any kind of timeline, like are we thinking fall 25 or spring 26 or like anything like that? Yeah, thanks. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. I see your pronunciation there. there <laughs> yes, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, um, don't know. Right. Yeah. So again, we are working, trying to work through all the issues. And then again, the, the FDRG and the, this approval approval process takes a while. Right. Um, and I don't think we'll catch up to fall 25. But um, again, I think our students are going to be trapped in the fact that they're going to have to do a CalGET CGE which is gonna be the non-teacher ed, elementary teacher ed math. And then for a while, if they wanna get that associate degree transfer, they're gonna have to also do the math for elementary school teachers until we can unhook that thing from the core requirements. And so, um, yeah, I think that's gonna be probably a temporary thing for a while. So, um, but I, again, it's, just, it's problematic now for our students who, uh, who are trying to finish that degree. So, it just it will compound and then we won't have a lot of students to be earning that degree. But the good news is that we'll have hopefully a second degree, then that'll be way more flexible. And a lot more of our students moving forward will be getting these degrees out of our campuses. So. Wow, Steve, thank you so much. Um, and please, any updates you get, uh, actually I'm gonna email you regarding Actip. Um, we <laughs> Jane is here. And so I'm going to say, Jane, yes, we need to be part of Active. So we'll pay for the membership. And we are uh, really looking forward to it. Um, so just well, I wanted to mention that Kathleen is on. Yay. OK, go ahead, Kathleen. The floor is yours. Just, just a quick update. Um, so some of you were kind of new to this space. So the SF Bay region um, has been chosen as a, a model uh, program for Vision 2030. Um, so thanks to our region for support of ECE and EDU. Um, some of the goals that I'm working on right now is still finalizing the advisory committee. We've been asked to include um, some members of um, the um, apprenticeship model at Rancho Santiago. Um, so I've done that. We did a presentation at CCC AOE and had some interest uh, for working on the advisory committee there as well. And um, a few of you who are on this Zoom um, are gonna be part of this committee. So um, still working on it. Um, two, thing, two activities we're working on is developing statewide data. Um, and you know, it's just way more controversial than I thought. That's all I'm gonna say. 
Um, but having a statewide um, data picture of our sector, including ECE and EDU, and our region did have, we've done, you know, annual sector reports, but not all the regions have. So we're trying to look at what's missing and put something together to have a statewide profile. Um, we have um, also some issues around apprenticeship that have surfaced. And um, I have actually been meeting with um, the vice chancellor, uh, Tony Cordova, about setting up technical assistance, not only for our region, but throughout the state around um, some of the barriers that non-traditional apprenticeships in this sector have been experiencing. So um, kind of we're trying to do both a visionary set of goals as well as managing pro problems on the ground and uh, you'll hear more. Um, now that school's kind of pausing, we have a little more time to um, do some structural work. Um, we also did a presentation with DAS, and I don't know, Steve, if you've mentioned that. Um, they have a teacher, um, conceptual teacher apprenticeship pathway that's being uh, formulated with this very large group. And um, Steve, Megan, myself, and Joya from Berkeley City College did a presentation to the group about all the good work that we've been doing at the community colleges around TPP and apprenticeship. And for some of them, it was brand new information. I had quite a few uh, chats saying, we didn't know you did this. And I thought, oh. <laughs> okay, well, good, glad we did it, but it was kind of new information. Um, and we, you know, we have a minute or two to ask questions. Um, we've scheduled Teach for the Bay for October 2nd to 5th. Um, stay tuned. And um, yeah, that's my little project. So questions, comments. I see we have a few minutes. And thank you for waiting for me. I had another Zoom. So um, thanks. Well, thanks for getting on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thanks, Kathleen. Um, yeah, do we have any more uh, questions, uh, comments? Anybody wants to share anything? We are at 1057. I cannot even believe that we're actually finishing at 11 today. Wow. One more comment. I just, I, one thing yeah. that the, there is group, there is interest uh, on behalf of CSU, uh, members of the FDRG and community college FDRG to create a second education course, lower division education course for our, the second um, associate degree for transfer that really focuses on DEI um, mm -hmm. in uh, education. And so, Again, that just was something that we kind of came to agreement on at the end of our last session. And then we'll begin trying to figure out the way forward for that, what that might even look like. But I just wanted to let you know that we heard the, from the field that, that a second lower division education course is really important. And so we are trying to make that happen as well. Steve, um, where is these um, sessions, like these work groups? Um, how do, I mean, you'll, you'll bring the information to us, I hope. I'm just asking just so that we're in like in the loop, like how... Um, where's these sessions taking place or? So these are all work groups that are assigned by the academic Senate, right? Okay. And so the product of our work group will be produced and shared with the discipline right. through the, uh, the listservs. Okay. And so I'm just giving you all a preview of it all. Um, but yeah, so I just kind of giving you kind of what's in store and what we've been talking about, um, but it will all come through for, uh, through the state listservs for feedback and, um, value. And you'll keep us posted, kind of right? What's that? You'll keep us posted. Like you, you will. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just have a quick question related to to what you just said, Steve. Is that do you think it'll be modeled on the teaching teaching in a diverse society course we already have? Something like that, but maybe in the EDU area, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So we got to get the CSUs to kind of find one that they would agree to accepting, and so, um, but yeah, that was kind of the idea was to trying to figure out how we might be able to look at that and go from there. Okay. Could it double count for ethnic studies? That would be the goal. Yeah, that would yeah, be also that'd the be goal. Great. Yeah. 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 Okay. To get a two for. <laughs> yeah. Two for one. Uh great. Uh if, if we don't have any more questions uh or you know comments, that would be great. Uh Steve, I will hold you to it. Please, please keep us posted. I really um, especially for the EDU, I know there's a lot of changes. I know at AVC we are looking at some of the things too, just like uh Nadia um the course that we were looking at for teaching in the diverse society. 
I'm kind of interested to see what they're going to use. Um, I'm not saying that mine is the best, but it is kind of the best. We have a really good course <laughs> teaching in a diverse society. And I, I at least I want to say for us at AVC, uh, I'm teaching it this summer and it's one of my favorite courses, but it's we target, you know, diversity, culture, everything. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you guys want to get added to the agenda, please send it, send it our way. Any topics you want to talk about for our next meeting, uh, I'll put them in the agenda and I can add you guys to it. Uh, any updates, Steve, that you have, please send them my way and I'll add you if you can um, to the agenda. And I think Active, we had updates. You don't have any um, updates from Active? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so we have our planning, our our um our convening Megan, is already set for the date. Yep. Uh, and then Megan sent that. I was going to say, Megan sent them to me and I put them on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I mean, you don't have to remember it all. It's on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Megan emailed me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, there, there you go, um, Steve. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, enjoy it. Uh, Shannon, I know you're going to submit. Sharon, I know you, you're going to submit grades. Uh, you're going to get them done. Uh, I'm going to hit stop recording. Right so if you guys just want to talk. <laughs> I got to go.